Justin Sanders back. Started. Uh, I am Tim Fitzgerald, Timmy Fitz, uh, broadcast voice of the Admirals, media director. I am the only person left from the front office of 2013, from the original Admirals team, so I've I have survived. <laughs> uh, and here we go, as a franchise, into season four. That's right, season four. Raise your hand if you thought we'd make it this far. That's what I thought. It's about right. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah. Well, here we are. A lot of you folks that are here are longtime sponsors. Uh, you've seen Bill in photos in 13, being a proud sponsor of Admirals Baseball. Um, and a lot of you guys have, have been around for a while. You're kind of um, somewhat of our apostles, if you will, the, the loyal followers that then send out to spread the word of Admirals Baseball. And, it keeps, it keeps getting better, basically. Every season, Admirals Baseball has taken a step forward uh, with its foothold in the community, its stability as a business. Every year it keeps progressing as it was, it was a startup. It really was like, like an internet startup. And a long time ago, in a previous career of mine, uh, back in 2000, I joined an internet startup, a health website, as an editor writer. And there were times, oh, we're going to make payroll, oh, we were going to barely survive this year, this is all, I don't know if we're going to make it. I ended up being there nine and a half years. So that's, that's the process, that's part of it, of, of making it into year four now. Is, is, I've talked about this at our, our welcoming banquets, that we have our, our admiral's infancy, then it's, it's adolescence, young adulthood, now we hope to hit uh, adulthood of the admiral's franchise and, and really grow and uh, really become uh, a whole entity here in town that everybody really loves and, and can come out and, and be entertained by. So keep spreading the word, keep spreading the word of, of Admirals Baseball. Um, because right now, it, it's kind of similar to the rebirth of Vallejo. The rebirth, the, Vallejo was a military town, a naval town for so long, and then an abrupt change in 96. And it's kind of finding its identity, its footing, and, and where it's going to go. And the team is real similar to that, finding out who's leading it, and, and getting its footing. And so the, the, the town and the team, very similar, very similar paths and the way they resemble each other. Recently we sent out a survey to people who are familiar with Admiral's Baseball. It's on our Facebook page. Go to our Facebook page and you'll see it there. 
And it was a survey about what people liked, what people didn't like, what they wanted to see improved at Admiral's Games. And of course, people were like, wanted, had input on concession stands and, and things involving in between inning entertainment and all that. But the answer that came up the most, the most common answer for what would get you to come to more Admiral's Games was a high quality of baseball. And it shows how this town is a little different than other independent baseball towns. This town is about the baseball. There's real heavy baseball fans here in Vallejo. And that was the highest priority. Best quality of baseball possible would get more people to games. And that's what brings us here today. We're gonna to talk about a guy who has a unique style when he speaks to people and, and leads them and, and coaches them up. Uh, we call them Sammy-isms, if you will. Sam, yeah, we'll go with Sammy-isms rather than Mike-isms. Sammy-isms, stuff that everybody knows, things like, now listen here, Doc. Come on, yeah. Come on baby. You know, stuff if you were playing a drinking game that each time you'd have one of those. <laughs> things like that. Uh, and he has coached the likes of some folks here today. In fact, if you were uh, the strikeout leader for the Admirals last year and had the best ERA of any starting pitcher, and were a former sixth round pick of the Astros, you can maybe stand up and tip your cap real quick. There you go, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know what, also, if you were the clown prince of Admirals baseball. Oh, that <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to talk about a gentleman today who has led these guys and uh, plans to forward and the leader of it all, the owner of the Vallejo Admirals, will come up and speak now, Mr. Kevin Riley. Kevin. Thank you guys all for coming and uh, along that, those lines I want to recognize a couple of folks who are great supporters of the team. Uh, I want to start with uh, the first by our first ticket, Mr. Bill oh. Keegan. First ever yeah. ticket. Yeah. Uh, there's Peter Brooks for Brooks Communications. He's our, he's our guidance and conservation. And we thank Susan Knoll, Knoll Designs, does our banners and our art. Yeah. Naturally, our players, we have, is that Brad there? Yeah. And Fred Young, and we had the other two. And then Mike Kohler from Pal Foxy. So we have Rebecca and her family. Yay! Alicia Cepeda. Ron Lee from Remax. What a The Times Herald. And Ira Smith from Napa. We've got our front office staff, if you guys are all here, we have Christine and Melissa and we have Chris and uh, Juan and Phil are here. <laughs> anyway, uh, very excited to have you here today and uh, this is kind of our first public announcement of the year. Uh, we're planning a, obviously a fun, successful season. Uh, as I said when I first took, took over the team, uh, I, I, I see minor league baseball as a uniquely local enterprise. It's part gong show, part town square, part uh, intimate pro baseball, where you are right against the, the field. Uh, I wanted to feature the best of the city having fun among the neighbors and, and honoring them. This year, we're uh, engaging much more with our sponsors, some of whom are here and were mentioned. Uh, and we're going to try to integrate them right into some of the fun. Some of the things we are talking about are things like the Recology Recycle Race, Toscalito Tire Race, <laughs> maybe the Sacks Hot Dog Sack Race. We're also planning uh, karaoke for those who are crazy enough to get involved. <laughs> Okay, we're, they're all welcome. Uh, and it's, all, it's really designed to be a place for, for all of our, us to have fun with our neighbors. Uh, 
We're, we're going to think of comedy nights, live music. We want to continue having the, the kids' movie nights. Uh, we're working uh, with some sponsors and benefactors to see if we can get a kid zone built behind the visitor's dugout. So that it'll be a safe place for kids to hang out and uh, do kid-friendly baseball stuff. Uh, we're also planning for the slightly older Little League kids to uh, have camps for them and then pre-pre-game to have Little Leaguers in uniform to get to work out and stand next to the uh, pro players for the National Anthem. There's a certain starstruck aspect to a Little Leaguer standing next to these big athletes. Uh, uh, this year we hosted the Little League, the Little League sign-ups and provided tickets to the early sign-ups. Uh, and we're going to do as much as we can to enhance baseball throughout the city. As pertains to Town Square, we're going to do the same thing uh, as last year. We want to honor the outstanding achievers in the city. Uh, Justin Soroyan last year was his four-peat of the uh, life-saving competition. Uh, any other outstanding athletes, the legends in Vallejo, uh, or Armed Forces Service people. Lastly, it's the athletes themselves and the people who coach them, which brings us where we are. The person I'm about to announce has spent his lifetime, I think, preparing for this moment. Uh, he was, from being an outstanding young athlete, his, his college scholarship to, you know, it was it Dallas Baptist? Yeah. Uh, to, uh, goodness, the minor league system, I have the Reds, and the Rangers, right to the camps. And then a long history serving baseball here in Solano. And to give you an idea of just how long, uh, Foster Lumber was a sponsor for, they're one of our sponsors, but they were also a sponsor for one of the teams that Mike was affiliated with, the Fairfield uh, Indians. Yeah. But it wasn't David Jones. Yeah. <laughs> It was David Jones' father who was the sponsor. Who was that far back? Anyway, uh, I consider that uh, this man is equal parts baseball savvy, connection to players, and connection to our community. I'm proud to announce our 2016 manager of Vallejo Admirals, Mr. Mike. about uh, what we're about to do is we're going to start teaching 
professional baseball at its highest level. We are not going to have a semi-pro team on the professional baseball field. Okay? Leadership, integrity, and things that you have to go through with your teammates to be in a tight team, chemistry, all of that works itself in. Starting with that young man right there, that one, and this one right here. David Danelli, Ian Graham, Brad Young, that's my baby. <laughs> Alisa Peta, that's my baby. opportunity after all of this time that that man there means more to me and he don't even he don't even understand he will you know just like this little head right here <laughs> <laughs> you know? so uh, what we're building as a family guys you know there won't be guys out there walking, walking around wondering what, what they're going to do. There won't be guys out there, you know, wondering what, you know, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Because when we pick our ball club, for you to be good at what you're doing, you have to see it immediately in baseball. There's no waiting. Everything is now, okay? When we see guys that come out there just pouring their hearts out, doing what we need them to do, then they're going to be in that 22 peak that we pick for this ball club. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to keep like five guys, six guys extra, keep them around. You guys are going to have ball cards, so we're not going to be trading players. You're going to get out there and get better, and I'm going to squeeze your head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're going we're to have fun. And I also want you to do your job because I always remember professional baseball is a business. Okay, decisions that are made are business decisions. It's not, it's not anything personal that goes along with this game at all because if you start taking it personal, you won't move because you won't learn anything. Saying that, this young man I'm about to present to you is Mr. Tim Wallace.
being just coaching, if I can pass on what I know to someone else. So I'm just going to give it my best shot, come out and uh, have fun with the guys, make them understand the game, and hopefully get them to a higher level than what we are here. So with that said, I'm not going to stand up here and talk all day and start crying like that. <laughs> I'm just grateful for the opportunity. And, uh, thank you, Kevin. And I know me and you, Tim, we got the same name. We're going to have some fun. And uh, I just look forward to uh, getting the players in and getting out on the field. So hopefully we have a good season this year. That's why if you guys like you, you probably keeps everybody up. Lonnie Jackson. This guy here. This guy here is a big guy. He used to get home runs for the Dodgers. And uh Good baseball man, loves teaching his game. <laughs> nervous, baby. I can understand. I was crying now. You dropped my stuff. That's Papa. <laughs> properly work, good work, and so they can move on further with their lives. Uh, I believe my positional role right now will be the first base coach, outfield coach, slash hit instructor as well. I want to say thank you for the great city of Vallejo for accepting me to be here today. And Mike, I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you. Plus, like you, my dad. Thank you. I've been around Mike for a very long time, ever since when I was 13 years of age. Wow. And Mike taught me a lot of stuff. I progressed, I achieved, I pushed harder than anybody else that played with me. And so I was fortunate to get drafted right out of high school during my years. Played nine years with the LA Dodgers. Played in Nicaragua, Japan, Thailand. So I did my travels. So I had fun in the game. So now I want to be able to give my experience to the guys on the team to push them further along. I want to say thank you again to everyone by being here today. God bless. Thank you. Big tall guy, hair is white, good guy, nose pitching. That's why I brought him here, World Series guy. Okay, now, this is what I want, you see, the, the starting this thing out, you have to have the top together. That's why I got professional athletes to teach professional baseball. You can't teach something that you don't know. And if you don't know, go find out and then come back. You know? <laughs> but uh, we're going to have a good time. And uh, got a lot of good ball players coming here. And like I said, Warren Brewster, my pitching coach. I'm sorry we couldn't make it today, but he's coaching up in Napa. It's just starting today. 
Uh, but you'll hear him on the radio with, our, with, with all of us on Monday. That's Oscat Radio, 844. 8.9.5. <laughs> F yeah, 6 degrees of set. <laughs> <laughs> On the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the fence blitz. Okay? So, uh, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you coming out. And I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate you. You know, what? No, no. <laughs> and I'm one more person I want you to, I want to, want to say something. Ali? You can't I've known Mike for a long time, uh, ever since I was uh, about 10 or 11 years old. Uh, you know, my father, my father's Orlando Cepeda, uh, the Hall of Famer for the Giants. And um, uh, when, when he used to live, leave out of town, we were too young, so we would stay with Mike. And um, that grew into, uh, that grew into a second father relationship. So ever since then, I felt like he was like my second dad. Um, you know, now I have a wife and, and kids of my own, and um, I understand what it took for another man to uh, bring other kids into their home. Uh, I think it was about six or seven of us, my older brothers that, uh, that, that lived in the house, and uh, Mike was a hardworking man and with Rebecca and took care of us, and now that I'm, I'm 39 now and have my own family, I can only imagine. Um, having, you know, bringing in two other kids into your home and having to feed them. And, and, and it ended up us living there more than, so it was, it was a great, great relationship and not even to mention the, the baseball relationship that we had and um, him teaching us a lot about baseball and a lot about growing up and being adults. Um, so now, again, now that I'm old, I have so much respect for him and Rebecca and, uh, and what they did. So I think this is, I love to see the opportunity that he's getting today. Um, he's a great baseball guy, and not other than that, he can teach so many life lessons. The baseball is about learning life lessons. Um, so even though he's going to be a great baseball coach, but he's going to be a great mentor to uh, all the players. So I'm very, very happy that he got this chance, and I'm sure that he's going to do a very good job for you guys. And I wish you the best, and I love you. Thank you everyone for coming out this afternoon. Uh, we have a little time for all the press here this afternoon to come up and chat with the with the coaches. First we're gonna get our photo shoot on over here. Let them model their gear. Thanks everyone for coming out. Um, season gets started end of May, early in June. So we'll see you over at Wilson Park. Go to VallejoAdmirals.com, go to Twitter.com slash Leo Admirals. Go to Facebook.com slash Leo Admirals. And yes. And uh, <laughs> keep following us there. Keep uh, keep up to date on all the things we'll be putting out. Alright. Thanks for coming out everyone. Have a great afternoon. I believe we're going to have a lot more fun. We're going to play great baseball, and uh, who knows what else is going to happen. What is your background in? I have been in technology and real estate. And what about uh, people that are working with you? Do you have uh, many on your staff? Uh, I have, uh, goodness, we have probably uh, half a dozen folks on our staff. 
and in varying roles, and we welcome as many. There's so many things to be done. When will the season get underway, and how much before that will the team start working out? The season uh, gets underway for the front office two days after the 2015 season ends. The season gets underway for the ball players about the middle of May when uh, the spring training starts, and we plan to have we're trying to have spring training in our sister cities, our neighboring cities, Venetia, Fairfield, and American Canyon and then come home to our season opener, I believe, on May 31st, Tuesday night. We all knew everything was going to turn out okay, and this is just wonderful. Uh, Kevin brought a new life, you know, to this baseball team as an owner, and uh, the communications department, along with the uh, the media and you know the guys, they these guys are doing such a good job on uh, uh, helping us, you know, put our message out in the community. We want to have at least anywhere from 500 to a thousand people in the ballpark every night. You know, so you won't be coming out there seeing guys throwing the ball everywhere, errors, that, that's not going to happen. You kind of answered it in your speech, but how do you get 500 to 1,000 people every night? I'm guessing winning games is the thing you stressed having, in your speech. By having a good product on the field, okay? Now, if you put, if you put a good product on the field, people are going to want to come see that. You know, it's closer to them. You know, they won't see guys out there just, you know, uh, uh, not knowing what kind of plays to make or where to throw the ball and stuff like that. So we had that happening a lot, you know, in the last few years. One thing, Kevin asked me, he said, Mike, he said, what's the first thing you're going to need as a manager? I said, a white board, you know. Yeah, because that white board, you, you, you put up your pictures for the day, pictures that are not going to uh, play. Then you got your infielders, outfielders, you got conditioning, running, all of that. So when a, when the guys come in the clubhouse and they look and they look at that white board, they don't come to me, they don't come to Wally, uh, Brew, or Lonnie to ask any questions about what's going on. If you don't need that white board, that's a twenty dollar fine the first time. Okay. Yeah. So you know, and if it comes up to three, you're gonna be running and paying money. <laughs> So when you, you get your whiteboard immediately, what's the first thing you want to do now moving forward that you're officially manager of that? Well, I want to sit down with my coaches uh, so we can go over different things as far as uh, what we're going to do uh, as far as power on the field. Uh, because I want to, I want my coaches. So we're going to have four different classes going on on the field. We got an outfield, outfield coach. Same thing with the infield. Bruce is having the pitches, and I got the catches. So uh, when we bring all of that, all those things together, that's when we to start to explode right there. Each one of these guys will be responsible for things that I want to see out of the ball players. Okay, now uh, there's adjustments that we're going to have to make and you know, and a, whole, and a lot of different things, but you know, from what I'm seeing right now, out of what we got going on, I think we got the, probably one of the better coaching staffs in minor league baseball across the country. My last question is, obviously this moment means a lot to you, cheered up there. Did you think you were going to cheer up? Were you 50-50 on it when you woke up this morning? You know, I didn't even think about that. You know, but when I saw my grandkids and my children and, you know, and, and seeing all of these people I've been knowing for, you know, years and years. You know, I raised Ali, Malcolm, you know, and Orlando and I are like brothers, you know, and, uh, and all these other kids, Tim Wallace and Lionel Jackson, you know, I was, helped those guys, you know, when they were younger and uh, eventually they get, you know, they made it to the probation. Jimmy Rollins is one of my guys, you know. Little Jimmy used to ask me all the time, he said, Coach, you think I'm going to get to the big league? I said, they still got you. I said, you got your uniform and your contract? He said, yeah. I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know. And Mike, uh, do you mind if I ask uh, your age? I'm 65. 65. Yeah. And how long officially have you been in organized baseball, whether it be high school, independent ball? Do you remember your first year or no? Nineteen sixty.
Man, you and were you guys with Fairfield a, High at all? Or? No, I wasn't with the high school, but I had a uh, we had a semi-pro team over there where I took all of the high school kids like Jim, Jim Bowie played Jim Bowie played for me, uh, Jim Sakowski, uh, Fred Bass. You, I, you probably don't know who these guys are, but okay, Fred Bass got signed from out of Vacaville High School, and he got signed with Mike Marshall. Uh, Any Steve relation Sachs. to Kevin or no? Nah, okay. nah, nah. Steve Sachs and uh, uh, Dave Anderson. And oh, Dodgers be, and A's. Yeah, and that was going to be the Giants infield for the next 15 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mike, uh, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. Okay. See you around. What did you learn from that experience that you hope to bring to these guys? Well, with the knowledge that I've learned, you know, Reggie Smith was my hitting instructor, which he used to play for the L.A. Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. He was my hitting instructor. Uh, Maury Wills was my base field instructor at that time. And so with the knowledge that they've given me, I want to be able to give that back to them because even though we did have coaching staff who've been in the minor leagues for a very long time who also coached us. My main possession was that I wanted to get more information from the Hall of Famers. The Hall of Famers is the ones that's going to give you the key knowledge for your success because they already made it. And what's your primary job? Are you the hitting instructor for space coach? I am, or a little bit of I am the hitting instructor, first base coach, and also the outfielder coach. Okay. Um, obviously a big day for you guys. Sure. Uh, I know you announced on an interim basis that Mike was the head coach. Now he finally is. Right. How excited are you? And what went into the decision in hiring him? What did you like about him uh, early on? My goodness, it was, we had to go through a process. Okay. So we did speak to other candidates. Okay. But it was just the most natural fit in the world. This is a man who's lived in the community. He knows the community as I described. I mean, not for like two weeks, but for generations. Uh, and generations of baseball players and, and coaches and so forth here. Uh, he has a great connection with the players. And uh, certainly uh, he knows baseball pretty well. So it was just a natural fit to elevate him to be the manager. He's been with the team for a few years. What if you liked watching him, you know, whether it be an assistant or some other form of job with Admirals? What did you like watching him these past few years? Uh, his heart, which I consider is his connection to players, but also his expectations of their excellence. He knows what they have to do to be great players. Last question, Kevin. Now that you hired your manager, you got this great day out of the way moving forward. What's the next step for the Admirals moving forward? You got first game, I would say, around end of May, start of June. Uh, what has to happen next? Uh, we have to announce our manager of operations, Juan Gomez, over there. And, and work out the logistical details of uh, the, uh, the food, to have the best food for our guests. We uh, upgrade the stadium as much as we can to plan events that are going to be fun and integrate all the sponsors' wishes into that formula. So many cool things I'd like to do, but I, the number one thing I want to do is make sure the insurance gets paid. Today, this is the grunt work. The 1099s had to go out to all the players from last year. Mm -hmm. That was getting done. That was getting done at six o'clock in the morning. Wow. Okay. And today is the day they have to. Okay. And uh, justice, yeah, is better. Three, two, new animals. That's for the reserve. Yeah. Man, I just want to be last year.
Yeah. So not last year. Not last year. They didn't have anything to do with it last year as far as he knows everything, right? He's ready to go. I ain't doing anything. I mean, I, I literally knew nothing. I knew how to throw as far as I could and try. Hey, if it was, here's nothing. I realized they're trying to get.